Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. You should already know phones. If I catch you with a phone during the seminar, other than during a break, or, uh, I'll ask you to leave. No, I won't ask you. I'll tell you to leave. Everybody understand that? Is your English good enough? Um, one of the two people that didn't show up last night showed up last night. Who is he? Oh, at the back. Okay. The other guy's still not here. Okay. Um, any questions before we start? Good. I already commented about the, per the person or persons that ask the most questions. It's kind of a uh, do not pass go, do not collect $200, thank you, uh, for failure. Now that's counterintuitive, but happens to be true. Because you were given, first of all, forget everything's free on the website. Forget that. But you were told to read certain things. Now, I'm not going to ask you now how many of you watched Succession or, or Billions. I'm not going to ask you that. It'll be, uh, when we get to that section of the seminar, it'll be obvious to me who did it, who didn't. Um, but several of you have asked, how can I best prepare before I get here? Which is a legitimate question. There is no preparation. If I had a pill to give you beforehand that would uh, drain or burn out, or I don't know the right metaphor, all that you've learned before you got here, that would be the best preparation. Because virtually, not all that you've learned, uh, but almost all that you've learned about uh, transactions is, is wrong, is dead wrong. Only recently did the um, University of Pennsylvania, maybe three or four years ago, they say out of shame because I've shamed them. I spoke there not too long ago. Started a class in how you sell a business. When I used to teach, I used to go into the classrooms and I uh, taught one year uh, pro bono at my school that I went to. And uh, I asked, uh, how many of you have had, this was a business school, graduate business school class, honors class. How many of you had uh, had classes in uh, how to sell a business? Nobody raised their hand. Uh, how many of you had classes in how to buy a business? Nobody raised their hand. How many classes have you had in leadership? At the Naval Academy, a couple other places, they had, a, they had so they raised their hand. So then I used to look up wherever the dean of the School of Business was and say, and you call this a school of, of business. Because the three most important things that you could learn, you must learn, and you will learn here, are one, how to buy them, two, how to sell them, and three, how to lead them. Because you're going to hear 10, 12, 14, 18 people via webinars during the week that are going to tell you Mr. Pena's right. It's a motherfucker. Two things. Uh, default's a motherfucker meaning falling back into the, your old ways, i.e. your family, uh, and uh, running these things is a bitch. Because contrary, you're trying to listen to me to do the things I'm telling you to do, but your employees won't do the same for you. Just, I told you last night, I, I believe, if I didn't, I, I missed it. Uh, most of you that are in business have bought yourself a job. I'm sure I said that. And you should just go turn the key meaning close it down, close it down. Two or three of you could get better jobs working for somebody else than you pay yourself, which that to me is a, it's really counterintuitive. You know, you hear, I'm gonna go, I wanna work for myself, I wanna have a job, you hear all that horseshit. Uh, we're used to in the hood where I come from. Uh, and then you get paid less than you could get paid in the open market. Um, I said last night that I can't fill your cup uh, with QLA, uh, information until you, uh, not necessarily voluntarily, uh, but unless you empty your cup of all the horseshit that you learn. <sighs> now, that, that new knowledge uh, transcends out of business into real life. I told you last night at dinner, for those that were sitting around to me, uh, and one of you asked me what are the wrong reasons uh, uh, to get married. Most of you are married for the wrong reason. Most of you have had kids for the wrong reason. Um, there's a question I ask. Uh, that, um, you know, were you on purpose or by accident? Uh, most of you in this room are by accident, by your own admission. And your brother, older brother was by accident and your younger sister was by accident, by your own admission. And when 
I ask you in the paperwork, um, what's the highest uh, accomplishment, uh, high, uh, high performance thing that your parents ever did? Zero. What's the highest performance thing uh, your, uh, you ever did? Zero. What's the highest performance thing your siblings ever did? Zero. Well, zero, zero, and zero, even in the new math, means zero. So that's where we're starting for most of you, the basis of the knowledge, because you haven't done shit. In, and unfortunately, even though I, I got money for this, uh, if this is the highest performance thing you've ever did, done in your life, you're fucked. But see, I'm the only lecturer, speaker, teacher, mentor, whatever they call us, that tells you that. The odds of most of you, you're going to hear um, one of our superstars, the last day, the close. He's the, cl he's the hammer. And he's going to tell you, look in front of you, look behind you, look to the right of you, look to the left of you. They're all going to fail. And he's talking about failure vis-a-vis -vis being a super high-performing person, not just making a bunch of money. And he's right. The odds are two of you in this, actually 1.87 of you. One point, we'll call it two. I'm feeling generous today. Two of you will be potentially superstars. Two. A little less than two, but I'm a grandfather now, so I'm kind of generous. Those odds aren't very good. That doesn't mean you can't make a significant amount of money. Now, uh, high net worth was just defined. This wasn't in Davos or someplace. Uh, at the Bank of England and uh, the Federal Reserve, et cetera, they defined in late 2022 what um, high net worth was. And it, in $22, 19, oh, excuse me, 2022 dollars, it was $30 million was considered high net worth. I was astonished. Uh, it was so little. High net worth. So, um, Sa Sally, uh, takes care of all our money, but uh, we're in the high net worth, whatever that means, doesn't mean shit, uh, at the various banks that we have money at. And uh, we're, we're about 98% cash. We don't own any assets, it's 98% cash. And so the high net worth guys come to see us twice a year. You know, and they, come, and they just, they come in their little, uh, I used to say Toyota, but it's not a Toyota now. It's a, it's a Korean car, some kind of Korean car. And they drive up and they, they look like, uh, the um, uh, men in black, uh, except they're not as big as those the guys that played the men in black. And uh, they come in, they, you know, we have tea, and I don't want to see them really, but uh, Sally drags me in, into the drawing room. And we and they ask the same fucking questions twice a year, every motherfucking year for 30 years. We're on our third generation of high net worth guys now. And a couple of them have risen up. Not, nobody's the president of the bank. But a couple of them have risen up, but you know, they were senior guys, you know. Uh, and they, they think their shit doesn't stink, and, but that's 30 million. So in pounds, it's about 22 or 23 million pounds. I don't know how many rupees or whatever the other currencies are. Um, but that's how little, and that's why the competition is so slim for you. I told one of you yesterday in a one-on-one -on -one time, um, since Corona Rona, since January, February 2020, We've only had one guy, because he asked, don't we bump into this or a lot of us around? And I said, there's only one time that two of you butted heads since February-ish 2020. And it wasn't over a deal. It was over fighting over a chairman. Fighting over a chairman. Uh, and you're going to hear him uh, in a couple of days, the Belgian waffle. He's from Belgium, uh, the uh, soft-spoken kid. A rich soft spoken kid now who dropped out of grad school to pursue his, his, uh, his destiny, so to speak. And so, uh, but we've never had people fight over a deal in 31, 30 and a half years. How's that possible? One, because all of you aren't going to pursue this like you should. That's one. Two, there's, I put out about 200 of you a year. More or less. In Corona, I didn't. I put out about 120 of you. And we've got 8 billion people now. When I started this, we only had 5.7 billion people. But anyway, we've got 8 billion people now. Uh, and um, 
various in the room, I want to be a billionaire. Everybody knows what that means, right? Uh, you make 20, 30, 70 million and you go to sleep. Most of you, a couple of you, but most of you don't know what it is to have $10 million in the bank or $20 million in the bank or, and I know for nobody in this room, we've got $100 million in the bank. Uh, maybe they, your entire family hasn't made $100 million since the first one of you got begat. So when you have that kind of money, you go to sleep. And for the few that actually achieve the billion dollars, at about 870 million, it starts slowing down. And then 920 million, it starts slowing down. 940, 50, 60 million, you start taking vacations again. And you fall across reaching over the goal line of a billion dollars, a billion, $20,000. But I haven't heard from you since 60 million. Because you know I'm gonna ask you, where the, what the fuck are you doing? So that's the second reason. Uh, the third reason is something in your life happens. You've got three or four people in the audience that have had some tragedies uh, in life. And you know, when I say, you know, Man plans, God laughs. Shit happens in life. And most of the shit happens with your families. Your significant others, your sibling, your mom, your dad, occasionally your grandparents if they're still alive. Shit happens. One or two of you are gonna get cancer. Nothing I can do about that, I just know. One or two of you are gonna get cancer. And if not you, your spouse. Four or five of your, your parents are going to get dementia. They already have dementia. You just don't want to admit it. When my wife's mother, 18 years ago, 17 years ago, we were on a cruise for her 70th birthday. I didn't, we were on a cruise. And I told uh, Sally, you know what? Your mother's got early onset dementia. No. Anyway, now she's got the, the real, I mean, the real ugly kind now. And... Um, it took five years for us to get her, uh, her brain scan. Not because of uh, the uh, NHS here in the, uh, the UK, because nobody would drag her but me, screaming and crying by her hair. I tell you what the Lord knows before the Lord, Lord knows it. Just like when I called negative oil. I'm still asked about that. Last night, you saw John Robinson, I believe, Dr. Robinson, who, full disclosure, I'm his chairman, who is a slow learner. John, we know that, uh, but he never gives up. And uh, you saw uh, baby Trump, I believe, something about young Trump, uh, and you saw something about the backward bicycle. Correct? We used to have the backward bicycle here. Nobody ever wrote it. And then a girl, a, girl, a woman, a young woman, who was the CEO of a company in Switzerland, uh, came and her husband, who was an Olympian, a uh, shot putter or something, they came to pick her up and her seven-year-old son wrote it in one second. We had people two, three in the morning here trying to write the motherfucker. So we got rid of it. It was a distraction. But that's what my job is to rewire you. Rewire you. Um, Donald Trump's youngest son, Barron, was raised very similar to my kids, unfortunately. And you can't help but be spoiled. Now, a couple of you come from better homes, uh, not Trump kind of homes, but um, so that's extra rewiring has to be done. For example, I told you last night, there are no win-win deals. None, zero, okay? So some of you will have, if not consciously, a unconscious uh, feeling, that, uh, morality, that you, know, that you wanna do the right thing by the other person. That's not what I'm here to teach. I'm here to, to teach you do the fucking right thing for you. And as that extends, that has collateral good to your family. 
not for anybody else. You want to save the world? God bless you. Go out and save the world after you make a bunch of money. Comments about Trump from the peanut gallery. Comments about the backward bicycle. <sighs> Comments about John Robinson, who took a couple years working on a big deal at, at, at my direction, and it failed. We failed at the, at the goal line. Uh, this was a company that was uh, in the healthcare that was for sale for about uh, $115, $125 million, and it sold for $6 million. Our insulting offer was, you give us $20 million, we'll take the company. We're going to show you. For those of you that emotionally, whatever the word you use, can't deal with uh, the insulting offer and or the hammer close in sales, the hammer close, or the takeaway close, when you just get up and say, fuck you, and you walk out the door, you will be slow uh, achievers in this program. But those of you that can do all three of those things, you're gonna, it's going to be like a fucking nymphomaniac that needs to fuck it 15 times a day. Yes, sir. Uh, comment about Baron Trump. Yes. Uh, he, he wore a suit when he was only three and a half years old, so he dressed for success. So did our sons. After church mass, we go and uh, wherever we live, we go to uh, uh, a, a fancy restaurant where the, the uh, waiters wore uh, tails and gloves and, uh, and they learned how to eat and they'd be in their suits. Uh, and uh, our daughter, whatever the equivalent for a young girl was, to this day, now you can overdo this, what I call uh, the barren training, and I did. Our kids hate to put ties and suits on today. <coughs> the boys, they hate to put tuxedos on because every Sunday we dress for din dinner here. Black tie. When they're two, three, four, five. They hate. They hate to play tennis because I made them play tennis three hours a day. We used to have tennis courts. I ripped them out. I couldn't stand to look at them anymore. What they don't hate is playing golf because they could jump in their golf cart and get away from me go out to the fifth hole or the eighth hole and get away from dad. Because when they were playing golf, we're not having fucking fun. You're hitting, a, you're hitting a three iron to the pin. You're not just practicing out here. So you can't beat him too much. And I did. I overdid. I overdid. But you only get, even at three years old, you only go around once. Most of you have lived your lives like you, you got four or five chances at this. And when people say it's a fucking journey, they're brain dead. And some of my most successful mentees say that. It's a journey. It doesn't have to be a journey. There's a model. You either follow the fucking thing or you don't follow the fucking thing. Getting back to John uh, Robinson, and so uh, we fell short at the goal line and the company sold for $6 million that we had fought it out with for long. 15 or 18 months, and then he got back on the horse after uh, feeling sorry for himself a little bit, um, and me having no sympathy or empathy, and so he's made a few acquisitions, and he came here over Christmas to uh, talk to the uh, uh, hardcore and uh, do a series, uh, one of our series of the Godfather talks, uh, and he's, you know, and so now we have offices, uh, and he's a, a dick doctor. And his wife is a vagina doctor. And uh, when you go into, the first time I ever went to their office, Sally and I were there. And uh, in their um, waiting room or foyer, whatever you call it, I thought, oh, what the fuck? Is this a porn place? Because they had very uh, uh, visual uh, films on the walls of how you do this kind of operation, how you do this kind of operation. And... Uh, I can't imagine the guys, by the time they got in there they got to get it examined, um, didn't have an erection. And so, um, but, uh, and so well, he's a, a dick doctor, you know, one of the leading dick doctors. And um, instantaneous 
erections is his claim to fame. Instantaneous. For hours. Now, most of us know that that's not the norm. But, uh, and he's done very well. Any comments or questions about, yes, sir? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dr. Robinson was talking a lot about the EBITDA. That's uh, EBITDA. Good, EBITDA was a good way to uh, value the company. Not a good way. Okay. It's the only way. The only way? That's free cash flow. And we're going to teach you the difference between free cash flow and cash flow. When I say free cash flow, you could burn it in the fucking fireplace with no covenants, no attachment, no nothing. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this, and he was talking about, he was talking about the... You turn it off now. You, you just turn it, yeah? punch it okay. once. Okay. Uh, was the 20, 25%... Of the EBITDA, the cash flow, what are you talking No, no, about? he's talking about 20, 25% margins. And when we talk gross margins, we talk that equates the free cash flow, which equates the EBITDA, which is earnings before income, tax, depreciation, and amortization. You don't have to know anything about amortization, and you don't have to know anything about depreciation. And I'm going to show you a secret formula, which is on my website, how you can instantaneously look at after tax. Now, the rest of the world deals in after-tax income. Europe deals in pre-tax income. That's a long story, which I'm not going to bore you with. Why? Europe is pre-tax, and the rest of the free world is after-tax. Okay? But uh, the, uh, I can look at a thousand deals in a morning because I spend between 10 and 25 seconds, 30 seconds. If I'm given the, the five or six right numbers, I can tell you whether we're interested or not. I have not spent in my 52-year career, as much time looking at deals, and I've done thousands of deals, as this room cumulatively has done. Because you look at all the wrong things. Okay, did I cut you short? Go ahead. You understand? Okay. Now, he didn't know, John didn't know, notwithstanding he graduated, I think he said a magna cum laude or a summa cum laude or whatever. English lit or history or some worthless piece of shit. Um, the, uh, the only good thing that came out of medical school is he uh, met his, uh, his uh, Cuban wife, and, uh, who was also, but she's a vagina specialist. And when you have dinner with him, after about two or three drinks, the uh, invariably the subject comes to sex. Sex, and they can, well they are, Experts, so they uh, so if you have a first, no, you're never gonna have dinner with, but if you ever have a first date and you want to warm the girl up or the it up or whatever or the guy, whatever you you know, persuasion is, you have dinner with the Robinsons because you know they can't, if they're human or, or close to human, they can't help but want to go back to the, the room in the hotel. I'm not saying that's the only thing they know, but. I guess if you're the top guy or gal, and you happen to be married in the world, and they like people to know that they're the top. Any other questions? Yes, sir, in the front. Uh, Mr. Pena, what are your thoughts on Dr. Robertson picking the healthcare sector when he is a doctor and originally had knowledge of the healthcare sector and the QLA model. Yeah, not all doctors make it in healthcare because they know too much. Not all nurses make it in healthcare. Um, but when he came to the first seminar, I told him healthcare, uh, mostly because he was a, a dick doctor. And there's, I don't know of another dick and vagina roll up going other than theirs. There aren't that I'm aware of. That doesn't mean that they don't exist, but I'm not aware. You know, in the, uh, now I couldn't be a dick and vagina roll up guy because of the way I talk. I mean, but he's got a soothing voice and he talks about it just like it's normal. You know, we're rolling up a pencil factory or something, you know, the, uh, but, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what you should, but 30 some years ago, I told uh, Rick Scott, who's the current Senator of Florida, who used to be my lawyer, 
uh, I need to make money like you, Dan. I said, okay, what should I do? And I said, at that time, I said telco, which morphed into the internet, or healthcare. I said last night, healthcare was, or I told one of you, healthcare was growing at 3% a year worldwide. And now in 2023, it grew at 24% a year. And by 2030, it's going to grow in the low 30s. I made a great call. We're all getting older. Nobody wants to die, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And contrary, to, we're going to show you numbers that you hear about how, how many people are starving in the world, right? Less people are starving in the world today than 20 years ago. But if you tell that in a soundbite on ABC or BBC, nobody wants to hear it. But if you say, just like we keep on replaying, and the Israeli Gaza thing is awful. But they, I, I've seen them carrying the three-month-old baby that died in Palestine five million fucking times. I don't need to see it five million times. I know why they show it five million times. Because they were looking for eyeballs on the TV. Okay, Kat, thank you.